Shalom, 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 children of the Most High God. I believe that this message find you well. Today we just want to talk about the word, the living word. The word that we receive when you go to church. Is it living? Is it impactful? Is it changing your life? That we hear through podcasts, uh, in social media, also in churches, does that word transform your life? There are so many people who are forsaking Christianity. It's not that they don't receive the word, but there is something that is lacking in the word. is life. It's not just about talking, but it's about life. When we speak, it's our word, it's the word that we are releasing, having life. Last week, I watched uh, in London, there is a big square whereby I saw so many whites who have converted to Islam. In France also, they block uh, a big street. No one could enter that street. They were doing worship, the whites. The same week I saw in California, there was a boy who was eating while they were fasting. And they knew that it's one of them. So the man was being given a thorough beating. And there were so many whites. And even today, I live near a mosque. I saw when they were breaking the fast, when they were celebrating, I saw so many people who are initially Christians, but they have converted to Islam. Why? It's because these people are not getting word that is alive. And that is the challenge that the church is facing today. They are not releasing the word that is alive. The word that is alive, that is transforming people's lives, that is making people to change that is making people to love God, that is making people to enjoy the ambience and the presence of God. Let us read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The Bible says, the word of God, now this is the word of God. You know sometimes we can be speaking our words, but now we want to look at the word of God. What qualify a word to be the word of God? What uh, components does the word of God contain? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, the word of God is alive. So the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts all the way through to where soul and spirit meet, to where joint and marrow come together, it judges the desires and the thought of the art. So we have looked at very serious segment of the word. For the word of God to be referred to as the word of God, there must be life in it. This word must have life and must be active. We cannot have a passive word. We need to have active word. There are nations that we call ourselves Christian. When you look at the index of the happiest countries, they don't worship God, but they are happy. Because countries that we proclaim that we are Christian, there are a lot of challenges, there are a lot of malice, there are a lot of problems, because the word that we release is not active. The word that we release is not alive. It's not sharper than a double-edged sword that separates the soul and the spirit that goes between marrow and joints. This word must have something very important that can judge the desire and the thought of the art. So when we release a word, does it have that capacity to judge the art, the intention? When someone wants to kill, but the word has been released, it should judge him and tell him, that what you are doing is not right. The action you want to take 
is not appropriate because it judges the desire and the thought of the heart. So when we release a word, it's not about the laws. We have several laws. We pass laws every day. But our society is getting worse. Our moral is decaying. We are having apostasy. Because we release a word that is not alive. A word that is not judgmental. A word that cannot provide life. When you talk about something that is alive, it's about living. It's about having existence. We have to speak words that make society better, that make people to love each other, that make people to admire God. Christianity is facing a lot of challenges. It is, I can say, it is under siege. There is a lot of uh, the popularization of Christianity in the Western world, in Europe. People are abandoning Christianity in throngs in magnitude because the word is being released but it's lacking the components we go to church we never miss churches but still we are the one performing immorality we are the one still conning we are the one still corrupt because the word that we receive on the pulpits are not the word that are active and they are not living there are people's stories there are people's achievements, there are people's ideologies, there are people no, people's knowledge, but it's not active word of God that cannot judge people. Satan is not afraid nowadays. Even he come to church and make my pastors to join same-sex marriage because the word that we release is not informing people. Look at the murderers. They are the same people who attend to churches. Homosexuality attend churches. But the word that we release is not transforming them. It's lacking living aspect. All those bad omen, bad elements, even corrupt leaders, they attend churches. And the word that they receive is not active. That's why they are not uh, cor corrected by the word. When we talk about the word of God is living, it's alive. We talk about it is full of life. When someone is in despair and you release the word of God, this person should be restored. He should uh, regain hope because the word is alive. The word provides life. The word provides existence. The word of God is good news. The word of God is good news. We have seen some people, they are platform, they are just telling people, I, I can call them, they are like the prophet of Baal, prophet of doom. They only tell people the worst. Oh, you lose job. Oh, you'll separate. I don't see. It's not what. That is not the word of God. The word of God is good life, is hope. The word of God is good news. That's what the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19. Jesus, when he entered the temple, he picked a scroll of Isaiah and he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. So the gospel is about the good news. People are lacking good news. People are depressed because they don't get good news. People are now in a state of despair. People are in bad position because they don't receive the good news. You are telling people, if they joke with you, you will cause them to suffer. If they don't pay tithe, they will die. If they do what? That is no longer good news. Good news is telling someone, God loves you. He cares for you. God has a plan for you. God will never abandon you. God will never forsake you. That is the good news. 
The good news is the work of the cross. The good news is not about telling people how much you have bought, how many things you have, how much wealth you have accumulated. The good news is about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is about power. When we preach, and we preach without having a word that is alive, we are just motivational speakers. We are just inspirational talkers. But the word of God transcend, go beyond words. It's about life. It's about giving someone life. That young girl is about telling her, don't worry, God has you in plans. That jobless man is about telling him, God has a plan for you. That person that the door has been locked, when he received the word, he get uh, rejuvenated, vitalized. He get new hope because the word is a good news. And the word of God is always fresh. The word of God is always fresh. The word of God is always at the right time. The word of God will never stay. The Bible says, Flowers withered, leaves dry, but the word of God never changes. First Peter chapter 1 verse 24. First Peter chapter 1 verse 24. The Bible says, as the scripture says, as the word says, and this is what I encourage our student in theology. Let it be your custom. Let it be your behavior. Always speak from the scripture's perspective. Always argue from the scripture's uh, view. The scripture says, Peter began by the scripture says, the same behavior of Apostle Paul. He was referring from the word. He was speaking from the word. The scripture says, but there is some preachers in this city. For an hour, he has not mentioned the scripture says, even some go for two hours. They have not mentioned the scripture says. They tell you, I think, I know, when you do this, when you do this. But they are few of the scripture says. Let us have this habit of the scripture says. Because it's very, very important why we need to speak from the scripture. And I'll be telling you at the tail end why we need to speak from the scripture. Why we need to worship from the scripture. Why we need to sing from the scripture. Why we need to pray from the scripture. Why we need to deliver our sermons from the scripture. Not about philosophies. There are people that just speak philosophies and they release to their congregants. But we need to come to the point whereby we start from the scripture. The scripture should be our basic. Uh, Peter says, his first letter, he's speaking, he's saying, as the scripture says, all human beings are like grass. All human beings are like grass. And their glory is like wild flowers. And their glory is like their wild flowers. What is that? The Bible is saying that even fame fades. There are people that we, we used to honor. They are no longer there. There are people who had great name, but they are nowhere to be seen. Because the Bible says, all human beings are like the grass. That is the time that you shine. And that is the time that una chapa. That is the time that you are a showstopper. And that is the time that you are abandoned. Because that is the nature of man. Man is like a grass. That is the time that you flourish. And there is a time that things are not working on your way. Because the Bible says human beings are like grass. Grass today, it grows. Today, there is some mild dew. Today, it is very green. It is very healthy. And all their glory is like the wild flowers. So their glory is like the flower. Let us look at what the grass and the flower does. 
the grass withers and the flower falls. The grass withered. There is a time that it withers. The grass is no longer appealing to the eye because it has withered. There is a time that the flower cr is crushed. It dries. The scorching sun makes the, the flower to fall. But the word of the Lord remains forever. So the word of God remains forever. Fashion become obsolete. Fashion become outdated. Trend, they lose their power. But I want to tell you today, the word of the Lord remains forever. This word is good news that was proclaimed to you. So the word of God is good news that was proclaimed to you. So this word should be good news forever. When the word is good news, you will not go again to look at other literature. You will not go again to read from the mammon of Jesus Christ of latter days. You will not go again to the watchtower of Jehovah's Witness. You will not go again to the Apocrypha. You will not go again and look at Quran, Hadith, or uh, Sunnah. Because this word is satisfying. This word is good news. This word is good news that was proclaimed unto you. The word satisfies. I want to tell you, it is not our church doctrine or practice or program that sanctify a person. You know, there are people, they have their laws. I was uh, walking one day along uh, near, near Catholic of Imara Daima, and I saw a big banner with pictures of clothes. They are telling you, don't come with, uh, with trousers. Don't come with this cut. Men don't come with short. Don't come with what. There were so many pictures. And I asked myself, that is the right way and the right thing to do things. You will do that and will chase people away from God. Yet these people, they need to be transformed. Prostitutes will fear to attend such churches. And yet, they need also to receive the word of God. There is a way of making these people change their attire, their, their dressing. It's not about stoning people. As we are talking now, in America, the way they are pushing gazing in Africa, they have seen the effect of gazing. They, are, they now stone gays and lesbians in America. But they have the laws. Stoning has not stopped them. In Uganda, they have punitive, uh, punitive punishment for gays. But it does not stop. The right thing to do is to give them the word of God. Because the word of God has that capacity to change the character of people. The word of God has capacity to transform the mind and the mindset of people. When you release the word of God, the word of God make people abandon their bad behavior. If we are talking about alcoholism in central Kenya, it has become a menace. It has become a campaign tool. Every leader, when you want to be elected in central, he must say, I will tackle alcoholism. They arrest chiefs. They sack people. But still, alcoholism remains. The solution of alcoholism in central Kenya is very simple. Give them the living word of God. The living word of God change societies, change people. The word of God is not about laws. It's not about stopping. When you try to stop some years back, there was a woman who was selling changa. And so many young boys died and so many men it reached a point that people held a demonstration to the chief camp and said this woman must vacate this estate. And surely she left. But after her leaving, it became worse that we lost so many youth than before. It's not about that. It's about the living word that changed the life of men and women. Let me show you. Hmm. 
the word of God transform, it has that capacity to change the life of women and men. When we read the book of 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, I just want to show you how the word transforms the life of men and women. It sanctifies. It's not about you bringing more laws, but it's about giving them the living word. Let the word touch their hearts. Let their wa the word change them. And no one will ever regret. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Uh, the Bible says, chapter 4 verse 5, sorry. It makes someone acceptable before God. It transforms people. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. Be, because the word of God, because the word of God and the prayer make it acceptable to God. So the word of God and prayer make people acceptable. It is the word of God that transforms people and make them acceptable to God. It's not about laws. It's not about punishment. It's not about stoning. It's about the word of God. It's about the word of God. That's why Jesus said that if anyone who has not seen be the first to cast a stone, and the people who are custodian of the law were the one who are better sinners, that they flee one after the other. Because it's not about the laws. It's about the word of God. It's about the good news of res resurrection. It's about the love of Christ. You know, the word of God has the spirit of God. That's why we need to release the word of God. Because it has, it is not about the human wisdom. It's not about sweet words. It's not about being eloquent. It's not about vocabulary. But the word of God has the spirit of God that when you release, automatically it becomes active and it does wonders. It's not about human wisdom. It's not about your own ideas. But it's about the spirit. Because the word of God it has the spirit. The Bible says in First Timo uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, every word of God is inspired to teach, to correct, to rebuke, and to instruct in holiness. So this word, they have God in it. When you release the word of God, you release God in people. When you teach, when the spirit is upon you, people accept the word of God. We have seen preachers being chased. We have seen preachers being rejected. We have been preachers reduced to being laughing stock because the spirit is not there. But when the spirit of God is there, people cry. People change their life. We saw the apostles. Someone like Philip, when he went to Samaria, he released the word of God. And the word of God changed the entire city of Samaria because the word of God is trained by the spirit of God. When we read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 uh, 1 uh, Corinthians the word of God 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 36 to 40 uh, sorry 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 the Bible says so then we do not speak in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit as we explain the spiritual truth to those who have the Spirit. So the Word of God is the Spirit-led. It is the Spirit that takes charge of your lips. It is the Spirit of God that tells you what to say, what is acceptable will of God. It's not about looking at what is trending. You preach from what is trending. It's not you are preaching from what sells. 
It's not about preaching what is trending, but it's about being controlled by the Spirit of God, being taught by the Spirit of God. We are being told very clearly that is not what we are speaking. The word we are releasing is not human wisdom. And the person who is speaking is Apostle Paul, a Pharisee, a qualified Pharisee who went to the best university. He sat, a, he sat under the best professor called Gamaliel. But still, he looked at the spirit. He's not speaking from the experience. He's not speaking from uh, the point of Pharisee. But he's speaking from the spirit, what spirit has taught him. So the word of God has the spirit that teaches people. But the church, we don't welcome the Holy Spirit. There are churches that does not even acknowledge the Holy Spirit. There are preachers that even, they don't have the idea of the Holy Spirit. They don't know the identity of the Holy Spirit. They don't know the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They don't know the spiritual gift. They don't know the... Even I was looking at a preacher abusing people, yet he said that perform miracles. And I said, the problem with the church, we don't focus on the spiritual gift on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We only focus on the gift. So this preacher, and is the one who is against theology, and theology will be helped how the Spirit works. You will know the spiritual gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You will know how to do your ministry. So it's not about the words. It's not about being an orator. It's not about being a good speaker, but it's about the spirit. That's why the apostles were not educated. They were unschooled. But they spoke, and people said, surely, these people are unlearned. How can they do this? And they realized these people must have been with Jesus. Because the, what they were speaking were amplified by the spirit of God. The word they were releasing had life. The word that they were uh, releasing had reality. The word that they were releasing were changing people's lives. The word of God. We have, there is a ministry called repentance. They always talk about repentance. Just release the word of God and it will make people to repent. The word of God make people to repent. We are talking, oh, this nation needs repentance. Accident is on the rise. But the solution of repentance, if we want to repent truly, we must know the word of God. We must receive. We must release the living word of God. And people shall repent. People will repent in their homes. People will repent in their workplaces. People will repent wherever they go. Because the word of God calls people to repent. It's not about you threatening people about repentance. It's not about you coining, telling people you have to repent in this way. But when you release the word of God, the living aspect of the word will make people to repent. The word of God. You will not use force. You will not threaten people to repent. You will not make people guilty to repent. But the word of God itself has that capacity. Just release the word of God and people will repent. Let us look at the first sermon that, Paul, uh, that Peter released after being filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. The first sermon that Peter released. You know why I'm focusing on the book of Acts? Because here is where there was power. And I've discovered these people, the tool that they had was the word. They did not have money as we have. They did not have influence as we have. They did not have media as we have. The only thing the early church had was the word of God. The only thing that they used was the living word of God. And we saw 1,000 people, 1,000 people, 3,000, 5,000 people accepting Jesus in a day. It was a big crowd that they could not attend to people. Some people were being healed by the just 
uh, handkerchief. They were releasing handkerchief. Just people to touch handkerchief. Because they could not minister to each and everyone. They were so many. And now people have used handkerchief as a doctrine. But then they were using it because they could not reach everybody. They were mammoth crowd. That they were using even their shadow to heal people. The power was there because they were only relying on the living word of God. We have now relied on our own money. We are now relying on our influence, on our ideas, on our creativity. And we are forgetting the powerful tool is the living word of God. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 40. I just want to see you to show how the word is enough, how the word is sufficient, how the word of God causes people to repent. Release the word of God and the word will do its wonders. I release this message and I meet people, testimonies overwhelming, telling me the word you are releasing is changing our lives. That's why I'm encouraged. That's why I come and release daily because of the testimonials I receive. It proved to me that what I release is doing something in their lives. Just release the word of God. And I don't even follow up. I allow the word of God to speak. I allow the word of God to minister. I allow the word of God to transform people's lives. And that is what I discovered with the early church. The early church did not have television. They did not have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. But they were causing ripple effect. But even the king was troubled. Even people were troubled. Even the city of Jerusalem was troubled because there was the word of God. When the living word of God is too much, life will be transformed. Not what we see, not uh, the games that we are seeing on our pulpit, not the jokes, not theatrics, not uh, gymnastics, comedies. Everyone is outdoing each other in comedy, saying that I'm prophesying. Prophesying what? And we have not released the living word. There is a preacher in Donom. One day we were watching his program. You know, the Bible says that. He attest words, just like leaves test sweet food. So every preacher that I usually see, their posters, when I have time, I ensure that I listen to the word. What does this man have? And I've discovered these big preachers. Majority have no words. They are just telling you stories and stories and stories. And you ask yourself, where is the word of God in it? Where's the good news in it? Can someone be transformed from this? I was, we were watching that preacher. He has a big church, a big tent. But after two minutes, it was a declaration church. Prophesy, prophesy. After two minutes, prophesy. The whole hour, prophesy. And I ask myself, what can people get from this teaching? Prophesy from the first to the last minute. Where's the word of God? What will you take home? What will you tell people we receive from our church? After one minute, there is a lady with a microphone. Prophesy. Prophesy. Can I prophesy? More fire. And ask myself, as we reduce the church of God to this, people are coming to listen. Jesus taught daily in the temple during the day. And at night he was praying for the power. Because when you combine the power and the word of God, Miracle happens. It's not about buying which, uh, you know churches nowadays are buying wheelchairs. They are buying crutches. And purport that they are healed people. Oh, I, I healed 5,000. I healed 3,000. And you ask them, these people that you are healed, where are they? Where is their address? They will tell you nothing. You tell them now, you have performed miracle, yes. Even the people from uh, Council of Disab people Disab Disability, National Council of Disability, people living with disability, they challenge the church. 
You have performed miracles. We want now to bring us the name so that we remove the name from our database. From today, they have not received it. That is the challenge. We are quick to receive miracle than to go for the word. We are running for prophecy than going for the word. When we go for the word, our life is transformed and people repent. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 36 to 40, the Bible says all the people of Israel then to know then are to know for sure that the Jesus whom you crucified is the one that God has made Lord and Messiah. Look at verse 37. I just want you to look at verse 37. The Bible says, when the people heard this, when the people heard the word, when the people heard the word of God, they did not hear stories. They did not hear what you did in that city. They heard the word of God. When the people heard this, they were deeply troubled and said to Peter and other apostles, what shall we do, brothers? So the word has made people to come to realization, to know that they need Jesus. And Peter did not speak from himself. He spoke the word of God. And this word, let us, verse 38, when Peter, then Peter said, each one of you must turn away from their sin and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So that your sin will be forgiven and you receive God's gift of the Holy Spirit. For God's promise was made to you and your children and to all who are far away, all whom the Lord our God called to himself. Verse 40, Peter made this his appeal to them. With many other words, he had them saying, Save yourself from the punishment coming on the wicked people. So the word of God has the capacity to make people amend their ways. The word of God is a way of receiving the spirit of God. People lack Holy Spirit because we don't release the living word. Peter released the, word, the living word. And people were filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what is happening now. Today, there is a pastor called Kakande from Uganda. This man is telling his people that you need to buy for me a brand new Range Rover of 10 million. I want every member to give me 39,000 and they will buy more expensive car like this. So they are using tricks to manipulate people to get money from them. We have people like Clifford Dollar. The man was, he was bought, his member bought for him aircraft and it has some technical challenge. The man told his, his uh, people that now we need to upgrade it was something that only needed about $20 to be fixed. But the man made his people to buy for him another brand new powerful aircraft. Telling them, if you buy this, you will be taken to another level. And the media followed majority of his pillars. And they discovered there are people who are poor. There are people using trains to go to his church. There are people bordering buses to go to his church. Yet is making them believe that when they give him money, they will be empowered. Here in Kenya, there is a one bishop who bought a car and brought it in church and say, when you have ten thousand, you take this car, this car, you will buy your own car. And people gave him the ten thousand. We are using manipulation to get money from people, but when you release the word of God, they will give cheerfully. We are using many tricks. We are using many because we don't release the word of God. We are not release the living word. That's why we are using a lot of manipulation to get money from people. We are using a lot of conmanship because we don't release the living word. There's a lot of tactics 
Preachers are applying different tactics just to get money from, his, from their people. You don't have to go that route. Just release the living word and people will, receive, will give cheerfully. First Peter chapter First Peter chapter chapter 9. Apostle Paul talks about giving cheerfully. It's not happening in our churches because we don't give people living word. Living word will make people see the need. Living word will make people give cheerfully and generously. Let us look at I just want to show in a city called Lystra, where Apostle Paul performed a miracle to a lame man. The same book of Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. A man who was healed, he was a lame man. When we read Acts chapter 14, verse 8, the Bible is telling us, in Lystra, there was a man who had been lame from birth, and he had never been able to walk. Verse 9, he sat there and listened to Paul's word. He sat down and listened to Paul's word. This is so powerful. Paul saw that he believed and could not be healed, and could be healed. So he looked straight at him, and he said in loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. The man jumped up and started walking around. So this man, what he, he did, he had the word and he was healed. He had the word and he was healed. Healing comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing. So the man who was born lame had the word and he was healed. The word of God performs wonders. When you release the word of God, it performs wonders. Let us look at now verse 19. What I'm telling you, you don't have to force people to give. You don't have to threaten people to give. You don't have to tell, promise people. Use incentives. Tell people that if you give, you will receive this. Just release the word of God and people will receive. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. uh, 14. Uh -huh. These people, they wanted, look at now what people are doing. They want, they are, verse 18, sorry, verse 18 and 19. Verse 18, when this words, the apostle could only keep the crowd from offering sacrifice to them. So, People are now giving cheerfully. People are giving. People are convinced they have to uh, sow a seed to these people. The crowd was increasingly getting uh, more and more. Hardly keep the crowd from offering sacrifice to them. People are offering sacrifices. Because what these people are doing were releasing the living word. When you release the living word, people give fear, uh, cheerfully. People give from their heart. You don't have to con people. You don't have to use those. There are so many games that are being used. Some people, they are even buying these miracles. You don't have to prophesy to people to give you money. Just release the living word and people will give. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. How do we get the Holy Spirit? We get the Holy Spirit when we receive the living word, when we release, we receive the living word, invoke the Holy Spirit, invoke the presence of God, invoke God availability. We have seen some people, they are bringing, they are telling you God will be here, God will be present. And when you look at the playlist, all the musicians, 
in line to perform. They are not godly. You will find people like in Akasolo, people like in Imbarambamba. They are the one to pull your crowd and you are saying God will be here. Just be someone who release the word of God and God will be always available. It's not about telling people God will be on Saturday. The kingdom of God is at hand. God dwell in you. The Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God is with you. But because you don't have the living word, that's why God is not with you. The spirit of God is not with you. That's why I want to advise you today. Listen to the living word of God. Don't run to motivational speakers. Don't learn to, pro to, prof to prophets. You know one thing, and this is a misconception, that our solution will be solved by prophets. When you look at Mkuru kwa Jenga, Mkuru kwa Ruben, Sinai, Lunga Lunga, churches are opened. What is happening there? Uduma. What Uduma? People are receiving prophecy rather than receiving the living word. Rather than being preached to, people are now being prophesied to. Being lied to. The problem with the church. That's why the problems are getting more and more. That's why challenges are getting more and more. That's why marriages are collapsing. That's why businesses are collapsing. That's why people are getting more and more broken churches. Because we have focused on miracles and prophecy. And we are forgetting the role of the living word. When we have the living word, the church will be powerful. The early church was powerful because there was the living word. You want the living word? You want the Holy Spirit? You want the presence of God always? Make sure that you, you listen to the living word. The living word will give you success. That's why God told Joshua, meditate on the word of God day and night. That's why God told uh, David to write that blessed is the man who meditate on the word of God day and night and delight in it. You have to love the word of God. The living word of God should be accepted by delight. Very, very important. Let us look at how to invoke the presence of God. You don't invoke the presence of God by giving. That is a misconception. You invoke the spirit of God by listening to the living word. And I'll be telling you why. It's very, very key to observe the living word. Acts chapter 11, verse 44. Acts 11, 44. Uh, Acts 11, 24, sorry. Uh. Uh. Here we are talking about, it's a long story of this man that he loved God, called Cornelius. This man is a man that he loved God. I just want us to see when Peter was speaking and people were being filled by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, verse 14, sorry. Acts chapter 11, verse 14. When he, is, he will speak words to you, by which you and your family will be saved. And when he began to speak, when Peter, when Peter began to speak the word, it's not when he began philosophy. It's not when he began prophet uh, declaration. It's not when he began prophesying. It's not when he began all those innuendos in our churches. When, I love this, and when I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came down on them just on, on, as on us at the beginning. So when Peter began to speak, the Holy Spirit filled people. When you preach the living word, the Holy Spirit will come upon people. The presence of God will be heavy. Because you are releasing the word of God. The Holy Spirit came. And the spirit came heavy. It was not a spirit that someone cannot preach. 
It was not a, a spirit that someone cannot prophesy on himself. It was not a spirit that they cannot perform miracle. You are told that it's only pastor that can perform miracle. It's only pastor that can heal. It's only pastor that can prophesy. When you have the spirit of God, it come handy. It come full. Peter said as us at the time of Pentecost, the way we are filled is the way these people that have had the good news are filled. There is another thing that is important. I am in a group of pastors. They are saying, oh, I want to be invited. I want to be invited. Invite me in Kenya. Invite me in India. Invite me in UK. When you are a person who releases the word of God, the word of God will cement friendship, will give you divine connection. What you are preaching will invite more people to listen to the living word. There are people who are forcing to be invited. There are people who are forcing events. When you release the word of God, it will make people be attracted to the word. When you look at when apostles went to Lydia in a place called Theatira and other women in Philippi city, there is something that happened there. Friendship was built because these men did not go for Moshene. Men and women of God, we meet for Moshene. We meet for gossip. We meet to discuss others. We meet to discuss about others' affairs. But when we meet for the living word, our friendship is strengthened. People are leaving churches because of what they had was spoken about them. Friendships are destroyed in churches because of the word that are released. But when we are meeting for the word of God, when we are meeting to discuss scripture, our friendship, our bond will be stronger than convalid bond. The early church met in houses and the business was one, the living word. But now we meet brothers and sisters for gossip. They say that it's called gossip because it was from people who went from worship. People who are from worship are the people who began gossip. Because now they are discussing others. That's where we have gossip. And it's very, very key. When we meet, let us discuss the word. Let us have more of word than out of Nani Alifanya. He did what? He did this. He did this. This preacher is fake. This preacher is none of your business. Let us discuss the gospel, the work of the cross, the love of Christ. I'll be showing you how the friendship was built how we cultivated relationship out of the living word. Let us be meeting in the word. There is a preacher from South Africa called Muteba. He, was, he used to say that, let us meet in the word. Let us meet in the word. Moshene is too much in churches. After church, you will see people in groups. What are they discussing? They are discussing their fellow members. In choirs, there is a lot of rift. Because of what? Masengenyo. But the day we meet for the word, our friendship will be stronger. Acts chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. Acts 16, 13 to 15. The Bible says, On the Sabbath, we went out of the city to Riverside, where we thought there would be a place where Jews gathered for prayer. So these people are gathering for prayer. We sat down and talked to the woman who gathered there. One of those who heard us was Lydia from Theatira, who was a dealer in purple clothes. She was a woman who worshipped God, and the Lord opened her mind to, pray, to pay attention to what Paul was saying. 15. After she and the people of her house had been baptized, she invited us, come and stay in my house, if you have decided that I am a true believer in the Lord, and she persuaded us to go. So we are looking here, this woman say, I must be friends with this apostle. What they are giving me is too much. It's a life transforming. I need to host these people. Don't force to be host. Don't force to be invited. There are preachers that are forcing to be invited. When there is a meeting and they are not invited or they are not mentioned, they are agitated. 
They speak bad about the organizers. Oh, you do not even acknowledge us. When you are releasing the word of God, you will be sought after. Every meeting, you will have a place to speak. But when you are a man of men, you are a man of vulgar language. You are a man that people are afraid of what word will proceed from your mouth. You cannot be invited. But when you are releasing the living word, they know they are sure. This man, we are safe with him. We can have him. They will not hesitate to invite you. You see apostles being invited because they were releasing the living word. And finally, why we need the living word on an individual level. When you pray in the word, God answer. When you have the living word, God respect your prayer. People are going with an answered prayer. People are now migrating from churches to churches because they feel that their prayer is not answered. The solution to answered prayer is praying in the word, in the living word. Let the living word be in your prayer. Pray from the scripture and God will hear. They are musicians, gospel musicians. They backslide easily because they don't sing from the scripture. When we read the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, downwards, tells us there is religious hymns, spiritual songs. Spiritual songs are songs that are derived from the living word. You want to remain relevant, sing from the word, the living word. Someone like Ruben Kigame, the song that Nimeonja Utamua Yesu, Nimeonja U Yesu, and I know it's good. It's from the scripture. Christina Shucho sang a lot from the scripture. And that's why she's relevant. You have to be relevant in gospel industry. Be in the word. Sing from the living word. And you'll be relevant. You want to be relevant preacher. Preach from the living word. And you'll be stronger. You'll be powerful. Because God watches his word to perform it. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. God watches his word to perform it. So where there is living word, it attracts the attention of God. God is attracted by the living word. God is not attracted by your feeling. You are crying in the churches, but you have not mentioned the living word. You have not told God, I shall be there but not the tail. I will learn nation, but I will not borrow. You have not told God. You have said that I you will satisfy with long life. You will protect me against the terror of the night and the arrow that fly during the day. You have to speak from the word because God is looking for that word. God is looking. You know even when you are publishing books, they, us they usually say, give your book some title with some keywords, because these keywords will direct readers to your book. They are the keywords. So God is also looking at the keywords, the living word in your prayer. When you pray from the living word, God answer. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Verse 12. You are right. The Lord said, I am watching to see that my word come true. So God is watching his word. God is watching his promises. God is watching what he has said. Therefore, when you pray, pray in the living word. Walk in the living word. Live the living word. And surely, God will give you, because he's watching. God is watching carefully. If there is traces of his living word. And he shall perform it. Whatever you desire, God shall perform it. Nothing is impossible with our God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Lord, we thank you, give you praise. We give you honor because you are the great I am. You are sovereign God, you are everlasting king. You are Jehovah El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. In you we put our trust. May you uphold us with your righteous right hand. Father, protect us against any error, any terror of the night. And the arrow that fly during the day. Keep us safe. Protect us against deadly diseases. Protect us against hidden danger. 
Protect us against accidents. With long life satisfy us. Give us our hard desires. Give us our daily bread. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray believing and trusting. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much, dear listeners. I believe that you are blessed. I believe from now you will put your Bible closer. I believe from now you will be friend to your word. I believe from now you shall delight in the word of God. For you to watch this video and other videos that are there in YouTube, kindly proceed to YouTube. Address remain Eric Sublime, E R I C K S U B L I M E. Eric Sublime, kindly like, share, comment, and subscribe. It my desire to go live, but our number is too is too little. We are our number is too small. Invite your friends to join and subscribe so that we can have our number that we can go live. I see people in TikTok are in live. You can help us to go live by just subscribing. We have a college here that we offer theology, Mount Mora Theological College, a registered college. Don't hesitate to join. Try to ask for more information. Email address mountmoracenter at gmail.com mountmoracenter at gmail.com You are saying, man of God, I want to stand with this ministry. I want to contribute to the quality of the production. I want to help you buy ring light. I want to help you pay rent. I want to help you in achieving the purposes of God. You are highly welcome. You can channel your giving and pass a number remain 0725-102-528. 0725-102-528. I love with the love of Christ. My name is Sonyango Eric. See you in the next teaching. May God bless you. May God uplift you. And may God elevate you. Bye-bye.